and gentlemen. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here. I will, um, as much as I love Washington, D.C., I will exchange the hot humidity of Washington, D.C. for the dry, arid heat of Tennessee Saturday day. Um, I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk to you about our recent elections in Kurdistan and the general progress that's being made in, in Kurdistan region. I have just returned off the back of a historic set of elections for the President and Parliament of the Kurdistan region. These elections were truly a milestone in Kurdistan's journey towards democracy. There was both a lively and free campaign period, along with a relatively smooth and trouble-free election day where almost 80% of the region's 2.5 million eligible voters turned up to vote, took part in the elections. The elections were heralded by the Independent High Electoral Commission of Iraq and other international observers as fair and transparent. These elections are also a significant landmark in our region's history, as several entirely different states of candidates divided up the vote in a meaningful way in accordance with the wishes of the people that turned up to vote in these elections. Thirty percent of the members of the new parliament will be women. That percentage is greater than any other national or regional government in the Middle East, North America, or even most of Europe. Moreover, the parliament will have representation from every religious and ethnic constituency within the region. So the real winner in these elections was the Kurdistan region itself, and not any particular state or candidate. The American President John Adams once wrote that the legislature should be an exact portrait in miniature of the people at large, and it should think, feel, reason, and act like them. That is what our parliament is trying to aspire to. We were challenged by some to hold the gold standard in elections. We accepted that challenge, and we delivered. We have achieved much in our experiment in self-governance, and of course there is much more to achieve, and we intend to achieve it. All of those who observed, monitored, and worked the elections praised the way that it was run. They praised the enthusiasm and the excitement of the voters, the transparency of the process. The electoral process took place in accordance with the highest international standards, said the Independent High Electoral Commission. July also was a month where the Kurdistan Regional Government took another major step to ensuring it could effectively deliver better governance. We made a good governance initiative a priority. To that end, we teamed up with world-renowned consultants, PricewaterhouseCoopers, to help us review our current conditions, review the way that we, our government works, and all the other governance-related issues, and help us develop a clear, clear-eyed, blunt critique and action plan to address the crucial issues of governance, anti-corruption, and transparency. Now I must state clearly and bluntly that I'm not making excuses about the challenges that we face. I'm not justifying or rationalizing our less-than-perfect system nor am I pretending that problems do not exist. I know we have on occasion stumbled, we've made mistakes, and misread circumstances. <coughs> and I'm sure we're expected and will likely make mistakes in the future. But these perplexing desires by many to highlight the negative makes us wonder sometimes what people want from us. This is not a question of the glass being half empty or half full. Half full. To some individuals, the glass has a permanent sip. So why is this? Why are these stories and quantifications by some scholars, by some bloggers, only focusing on the negatives? Many of the reasons are clear. Lack of true knowledge, what's going on in the region, sometimes it's just pure bias. Sometimes it's the desire to want to make a name of oneself by being provocative, regardless of accuracy. It's become a very successful cottage industry, one whose benefits achieve nothing towards the goal they proclaim or want, i.e. a better Kurdistan or a more democratic Iraq but only serves their personal purposes. Most reporters who now cover Iraq have a history of the country that starts from 2003 at best. They know little of the past, almost never visit the Kurdistan region, let alone spend time there. They purely simply do not know Kurdistan. It is telling to compare what is written or said by those who know the full story and history. The coverage is remarkably different. This past election proves that. The coverage was detailed and fair instructive, objective, and also educational. It is time that people got to truly know Kurdistan. It was the Greeks who first developed the principles of promise, and that the world has been built around them. Developed by the Greeks, idealized by the Americans, democracy in all of its forms remained the most promising form of government ever developed. We in the Kurdistan region are on that journey to that destination. Someday we will get there. I guarantee it. 